I am Liz Wright. Welcome to Live Your Best Life. The only thing that matters now is living by the power of this wonderful new creation life. We're going to become an undefeatable force of radiating glory, and we are rising up strong now in this hour. Hello, family. Thank you for tuning in for this week's what's going to be an extraordinary episode of Live Your Best Life with, of course, me, Liz Wright. And in today's conversation, I have joining me such a beautiful man of God who has chased after Jesus to know him more and more intimately, literally around the world, since he was 19 years old and Holy Spirit took hold of his life and completely radically transformed him. He's now the CEO of Iris Ministries Global, the movement that's headed up by Roland and Heidi Baker. And um, he's he's a man of great depth and great love. It is my joy and my privilege to welcome into the conversation with me today, Will Hart. Will, welcome. Hey, Liz. Thank you so much for having me back on. Yeah, yeah. what an honor. Oh my gosh. We're, well, I'm very excited to have our next conversation because obviously you guys out there loved our first conversation. And so, yeah, I wanted to to talk to you today, Will, about a subject that I know you're living real time right now and have lived. And, um, and is something, I just think, what you're sharing at the moment that's coming from your own life experience and the depth of relationship that you have with Jesus is essential for the body of Christ right now in this season. And so I wanted to jump off today in the, in our conversation, asking you what you have found to be true in the midst of suffering regarding your relationship with Jesus. Like I love, I loved one of the things that you shared when you were on our international mentoring community was that how we find him there. Yeah. But I'd love to ask you, you know, what have you found to be true? I find that suffering is 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 relative. And I don't wanna I'm I'm not a professional uh in 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 suffering at all. Uh we all have our things, right, that we struggle with. Mm. Uh so historically, biblically, um, you know, you have the church being persecuted, I think. I would that that for me that's that's like suffering, right? Yeah. Um, the persecuted church, uh, martyrdom. Uh, but then we have our life, right? We have sickness, yeah. we have disease, we have um, our children, our marriages, things that are are are, are chaotic, um, and and all of them. I think there's an open door. There 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 has to be an open door to draw closer to Jesus. And I actually personally believe that those that those moments were a lot of a lot of people would call attack or um, you know I'm I'm in a season of oppression or whatever. I actually think that there's some of the biggest open doors into knowing Him in in a deeper way. Easier said than done, right? It's easy for mm -hmm. somebody to come on here and give their opinion about that. Living in it is different, but I think that I think that those moments are not only I want to say required in our faith, right? In, in, in our walk and our journey with the Lord, they're they're used to draw us closer to Him. Yeah, uh, yeah. So a, a very important part of our of our walk with the Lord. Yeah, I I know you were sharing as well about some of the primary values, like the foundation that you walk on as a movement, as as Iris Ministries. Yeah. And a part of that is embracing the reality that we we live in suffering. You know, yeah. we live it. We, we're to live in joy and also find Jesus in the midst of the suffering. Yeah. You know, and, and to have that biblical perspective. You know, it's like like you were saying, Jesus doesn't um, necessarily lead us into suffering because suffering is all around us anyway. He doesn't create yeah. the suffering, but he will walk with us in the midst of it. And yeah. take us to a different level of relationship with him because of it. So we actually, I love it because when you're speaking, for me, it removes the fear of suffering. It starts to give me divine perspective. Yeah. Wow. Well, I'm not a theologian. Um, and 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 I love, I actually really, Liz, I love I used to hate studying theology. 
Um, but as I've gotten older, I think it's partially an age thing. I'm like a dad, you know, and, and, and I have a responsibility, yeah. you know, I have a responsibility to be a grown up. <laughs> to like, yeah, let's put on my big boy pants. And, uh, you know, theology in its core is, is really the study of God. Uh, uh, it's the study yeah. of his word, right? That's all that theology is. Right. And so I take it from the stance of the greatest minds in the world have been battling over these questions. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, 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 and we still have many perspectives. So I, I will say, this isn't a question and answer. It's more a question and response. This is what I, where I'm at with the Lord right now. And and knowing that that will change as my journey matures. But, but when I look at the scriptures, I see what many people would call suffering as, as this beautiful journey uh, with the Lord. I think one of the ones that Mm -hmm. I love the most is, is people would, you know, you get people stand up at church and, you know, I, I got, I had a flat tire on the way to church. My car's broken. The enemy's, you know, the enemy's persecuting me or whatever it is, you know, like somebody said something bad on Instagram or uh, I'm being persecuted or, uh, and I just say, no, <laughs> like you're being sharpened and, and shaped. Um, you mentioned our core values. You said mm-hmm. one of our core values is we will suffer for him if necessary. Right. So we're not looking for suffering, but we will not excuse ourselves from the call if it costs us our life. Uh, Jesus said this, peace I, I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. The peace as believers that we walk in is not in what the world would look at as suffering or comfort, right? And 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 I think we sh- we shouldn't confuse his goodness with our comfort. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a lot of people look at suffering and they go, I'm uncomfortable, right? Uh, and so I-, I must not be experiencing his goodness. That we go, his goodness means that I feel okay. But as you, as you read the scriptures, and I-, I mean, as you really, it's, I mean, beginning, middle and end, all throughout here are, are these chaotic situations some some designed by the Lord, Liz. I know you said that you know Jesus doesn't put us in these, but I, 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 I it's not that I disagree, but I do think that we look at them. It's our perspectives we look at them as suffering or hardships, but they're actually the thing that Jesus is using to to bring us to the next place in our faith. And, and it's so important we we have to look at these situations as 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 even if we don't maybe agree, it is like God can turn anything into good. So we have to look at, even if it's chaotic as, okay, Lord, you're maturing me, you're growing me. Lord, what do I need to get out of this situation? I I was, I was talking with Bill uh, years ago and he said, I think it was the first time my wife had cancer. Um, And, and, and we were going back and forth and actually, you know what? It wasn't, it was, when my wife had a, had a miscarriage and he said, he said something to me in that moment that, that set me, set me free from a lot of the condemnation. And, and he, he, he just alluded to the plan of the Lord. I, 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 I'm actually tiptoeing around this because I, it was something very personal that he said. Uh, And I, and I probably need my wife's permission before I share it. So, but he alluded to the fact that, that we have these one moments, these moments, whether we know it's uh, chaos, suffering, an attack, like you, it doesn't matter, like remove all that and just go, I have a moment in time where my flesh is being stretched. What do I do with that? And and we're only handed these few moments in our life where we get to worship him in the middle of chaos. I, I believe the last time I was on your podcast, I was sharing some experience with the pastors, how they were worshiping after hearing the most horrific stories. Yeah. I've been walking with the Lord 21 years at that point. Uh, and there was almost nothing more offensive to me. Like my whole, I was offended that, that they had this joy in the midst of suffering. It, it, it doesn't make sense in, 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 in our flesh, in our minds, but, but we drink from the cup of joy and suffering and we can find him there can find him in the middle. And, and I think just to simplify it, you only have these moments 
to give him everything, these moments of suffering, these moments of chaos, these moments of attack, whatever, whatever thing you want to put on it, right? Whatever name or title, you only have that one moment to, to give him everything in the midst. Say, you are God, I am not. And, and I think a lot of us, especially lives in a spirit-filled world, there's a, a, a big heaping of condemnation that comes, right? Uh, I think maybe a little, if you lean more towards like kind of word of faith movement, right? Uh, I, I'll never forget, I was, at a, I was at a more of a word of faith church. I said, how many of you guys need healing? No hands went up, right? How many of you guys are waiting for your manifestation, like are healed, but you're waiting for your manifestation of healing? Like hands went up, like, you know, it, because there was condemnation to say, like, I'm sick, you know, I'm not going to confess that. There's, there's so many of these little isms and, and phraseology that makes us question where our faith is at, right? And yeah. so regardless of that, we go through these situations where we are facing uncertainty, you know, with our pastors in Mozambique is, where's my next meal? Am I going to die tonight? Right? Maybe my, my life, let's say today, will my wife die of, of this cancer, right? That's returned. Uh, or my, will my kids hold it against you, Lord, if, 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 if it does, or um, a myriad of stories, you pick anything. I have this one moment of, of pressure to give him everything. And I'm, I'm, that's what we have. We have these moments. And Paul, on the island of Malta, right? Shipwrecked on the island of Malta. Like, I, I look at that and I go, man, like, that's, that's pretty crazy, right? You're shipwrecked. And then he, he serves, he gathers wood, and a snake comes out and bites him from the fire. The Bible says a viper, driven by the fire, attaches to his hand right? These moments of attack and chaos, and he was in chains before that. All of it led up to the entire island of Malta being healed, yeah. right? The, I, I cannot take away the struggle, and I would encourage all of you, one, it's necessary in shaping our faith and our walk with him, and two, you only have that one moment of pressure, to give him everything. Yeah. And so that's what I try to focus on, whether instead of figuring it all out. Right. It's beautiful what you're sharing. And it's obviously it's coming from your life experience. This is what you live. You don't just know it, you live it in the in the and in the midst of the of your community who have this same walk. You know, um, when you were sharing then. Holy Spirit reminded me of an encounter I had a few years back where I was taken in a vision and I saw the Apostle Paul on the beach in Malta and he was sitting on the other side of a fire. And I watched the moment you just mentioned from scripture where the serpent came out, the snake came out of the fire and bit his hand. And I was looking and I was completely immersed in the encounter and I was looking at him, looking at Paul, and he stood up well, and he belly laughed. He just belly laughed. And the joy, the supernatural joy that is his strength, our strength, came off him like just waves of power. And he just roared with laughter. And I said to him, like, at what came out of my spirit, I just looked and I just said, how did you do it? Meaning, how did you survive shipwrecks and snake bites and all the, you know, the being beaten to almost several times and on and on and on, all the persecution and the danger? And and he just roared again with laughter and he goes, shake the snakes off in the fire. They're not the point. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. And he said it three times and just roared with laughter and the joy hit me in waves. And Jesus, through that experience, changed me. And it's what you're saying. It's like, in the end, it's a walk of faith, isn't it? In the end, it's seeing Jesus. It's, a, it's all about him. It's meeting him there, like you're saying, in the midst of the suffering. That's the solution. That's the key. He is. You know, his joy, like you said, you know, um, when you were on RIMC, you were talking about the joy 
of the Lord is our strength. You know, we get to live with the cup of suffering and the cup of joy. And it's in the suffering we start to realize these realities as our normal Christian life, that we are supernatural people with a supernatural God who is with us and in us and backing us up. And it is ultimately all about him. It's just. Yeah. And, and we get to stand. I think there's a, I don't want to flesh this out too much, but there's also, we enter in, right? So mm-hmm. a lot of us are looking for encounters, right? I, I, and I say this to my spirit filled kind of charismatic brothers. We're, we're looking for encounters with the Lord. I, I've flown all around the world. I've stood in lines. I, I was, uh, I was sharing in the IMC that I just, I got back at two in the morning, uh, drove to Asbury and yeah. came, came back. Uh, why? Because wherever God's moving, I want to move. Mm-hmm. But, but biblically, right. We actually get to enter in with the saints who have gone before us. Biblically, we stand with a great cloud of witnesses. We get to actually enter in and partake in something that the early church did. And I, and I, please, I, I don't want to make a comparison with um, being tortured to death for the sake of the gospel to what my wife is going through. I don't want to make a comparison, but but these moments that many who are watching where they're, where they're being, feel like they're being stripped away, um, that's what the saints uh, experience. And we actually, in these moments, can you, can you see the Lord? Can you, can you see that, that, that we're actually welcomed into experience something that is equally shaping and forming, but, but, but the key is this. And I think you, you, you hit on it, that joy is not an option, uh, in the, in the midst of it, right? Joy, joy, his joy is our strength, not your joy that comes with alleviation of the situation. That's not what it says. Right. His joy is our strength. So, so there's nothing as supernatural as being in the midst of the chaos, the storm, and, and actually encountering his joy, not your joy. Uh, I, I said it before, peace I leave with you. My peace I give, give to you. Jesus said this, I do not give to you as the world gives. Um, this is not the worldly joy that we're looking at, that, that, it, that is an alleviation of the issues, right? It, it can come that way. I'm not, and I want it to come that way, but, but many times it's this joy. It, it, oh, oh, I don't know if you know Dina Van Hole. She's one of my heroes, Mike and Dina, they started a base in um, China. Mm. And, and, mm. and I've been, I, I, I've been blessed to go out there more than once. And she will get babies in the, that, that were thrown away, chewed apart by animals that tortured and, uh, and, and oh, she's holding this dying baby, right? And, and and the baby's going to pass and you're like, God, do a miracle. Well, the miracle doesn't happen. God, why did this, you, you know, why did you allow this to happen? There's no answer there, but, but you have this, this life that you get to pour out love and affection. Can you find joy in the middle of that? Can you find joy as the child that gets healed in their center and goes and gets adopted? Can you find the joy going and serving the, the girl that was in restraints in the top floor for seven years? And wasn't adopted, you know, can you find him in the middle of that? And I think that there is a place that is supernatural uh, of, of, of entering into his sufferings. But the, the, the issue, I think the key is we try to, we try to map it out, right? We, mm-hmm. Christians love the, if I do this, then this. And if I enter in, become a missionary that suffers, then I'll get, no, it's, it's, it's this journey and this natural walk with him where you, most of the time you have to face some wall, right? And you, yeah. and you put, you put it all out on the table again, you put it all out on the altar again, you find yeah. him in those places and you can't script it, yeah. but, uh, suffering, suffering and joy, uh, go together His joy. They, yeah. they, they go together. If you can keep your eyes on him. Yeah. Is his strength in those moments is what we experience. It's like it's Song of Solomon 4, isn't it? Where the Shulamite says, yes, I will go to you, with you to the high place. I will go to the mountain of suffering love with you. I will be your bride. And it's that yieldedness, isn't it? Where 
that you have, you've given over your whole life to him out of love for him. And it's from there you live, you live from the high place, you have more divine perspective, you, it's in those moments, isn't it, in the suffering where he trusts us with that situation, because he knows who he is in us and through us. And then as we yield, we begin to see him moving through in a transformational way that literally the divine touches that moment, that situation, and he's revealed, you know. And yeah. I think when we've had you know, my life, you know, like with in your life, I've had moments of intense suffering, sit, it was a lot long periods of time actually where I've gone through a lot of suffering. And it's I would I look back now with gratitude. I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't choose it, but I wouldn't change it because of who I know him to be because of that, the story mm. into my heart that's come out of that, that extreme suffering. And I love what you said, Will, how it's in those moments, they're just one moment where we they are opportunities for us to give him everything. Yeah. Like with what you're going through, you know, right now where you're able to say to him, I trust you. I give you everything all over again, Jesus, yeah. to be able to give him that gift is such yeah. a privilege. It's so powerful what you shared there. And and you get to, you get to face questions that you haven't faced before, or yeah. maybe you've been so used to just spitting out an answer every time. And that answer could be right, but how much of it do you actually believe? And Lord, take me through the process of, of actually firming this belief. I, I find a lot of believers, they have the answers, but they're just repeating what somebody else has gone through. But when you actually walk through it, you, you can own it. And, and yeah. there's an authority that comes in it. And I'm not an expert in this at all. I feel uh, knowing what goes on around the globe in the church will be like, I'm not facing suffering. I I'm here in a mm. paradise. Um, so I, I, I don't want to make it sound like I have the answers for this, but I, I, I've been reading, uh, Matthew six. I just love the word and, mm, and one of the most, I <laughs> know we do. Yeah. I know it's that. I, it. Yeah. It, it says, um, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. We, we quote that, but we don't, uh, realize this before he's, it's Jesus saying, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, but you should eat, what you should drink, what you should wear. For the pagans run after these things. Um, he says, but, but seek the kingdom and, and, and you get all those things, right? A lot of times this tension of what he provides, right? Uh, his, his supernatural provision for our life. The goal is not the provision, right? Yeah. It says, no, you, the goal, the main point is we in the middle of not having this stuff, not having what we think we need or we want. Like he knows what we need. He knows, he knows better than we do. He says, our job in the middle of this is to seek the kingdom and holiness. And, and you get it all. And I think so often when our when when, when we get tested, and, and I face this, we all face this, right? We start to pray for the miraculous to remove us from the situation, mm -hmm. right? But your call isn't to just pray for the miraculous. Like God, you will do it. Pray, pray for the miraculous. Do it. But but don't let your faith rest on whether that gets answered or not. No, no, no. Seek the kingdom and holiness, and 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 He will take 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 care of all of it uh, in in His timing and His plan. And yeah, uh, yeah. And, yeah. Jasper. Yeah. Beautiful, powerful, life changing, life changing, and it's interesting because, like, the more this in your life, well, like you can see you've you've followed him in obedience, and you've faced so many situations. And it, the more you go on, the more you and you realize his sovereignty. The more humble I think you get, and you, you you realize he's a big, huge. God, oh. sovereign, and uh, we we are toddle along with big L plates on. Like <laughs> I, I struggle over these questions, and I I sat Thank with one of my questions. heroes, one of my theological heroes last night, and just struggled over this stuff. And I think, I think, it's okay to struggle over this. It's okay. These big questions. It's it's okay 
uh, the, the, the issue isn't getting the exact answer. The issue is enter in and be, be humble about it. Right? Like, I don't yeah. know, but I want to know, and I want to know you more Lord. And yeah. so I love his sovereignty. I, 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 yeah. I, the heart of the King is in the hand of the Lord and he turns his hand any way he sees fit, right? God, you can control any heart, right? And then, and I love you have a choice. There's there's two trees in the garden. You have a choice. Like, I don't I don't get it. I, I love it, and I love studying it. But, but my my whole journey is will as I seek right to figure out these complex things that all of these these struggles will actually lead us to is is it leading me to love him more? Right. And can I keep my heart of of humility and loving him more in the middle of it, loving him more than just the answers um, yeah. and and being a bridge? I, I just filmed uh, for American Gospel. And I I haven't seen the first one, but I've heard a lot. And uh, I even our brothers and sisters in Christ that totally disagree with where I'm at theologically or what where I look at the Holy Spirit, I, I want to enter in and, and serve and hear and, and share. Um, and these, these, I think these moments are very, very important for us. And I really feel this, that we are in a place where, where we have to humble ourselves, um, as a movement, right. As a people, not throw, not throw it all away, but humble ourselves and listen because there's so many pieces that the body of Christ has for us that are in, I'd, mm-hmm. I'd say lean more towards the spirit filled charismatic world. There's so many pieces that they have that really are there to edify. So I just see all yeah. of these things coming together to bring unity in the body of yeah. Christ. Yeah, no, I completely agree. We, we, we have a lot to learn from each other, don't we? As we can, you know, see see and honor each person as one that the Lord Himself has chosen to indwell. You know, He's chosen each one of us. So we're of we are of penultimate value, I know. And as we as we see rightly, more clearly by His grace, I think the body is going to unite. You know, as we all journey together through our suffering, our respective suffering, remembering like what you've just said that in those moments it, we only get that moment once to love him in the midst of it and to choose to see it as our journey of faith ultimately no matter what's going on what's being thrown at us like you said in the end we're there in the midst of it with Jesus and it's all about him oh my gosh I could talk to you for at least another three hours I wanted to talk to you about Peter and <laughs> so many things gone so we can fast. do it again we can we'll do, do it, again. it we have to we have to have to I would love that okay me too me too just 30 seconds can I ask you please pray please pray for people as we finish yeah father uh first and foremost lord if if there's anyone watching that does not know you lord I ask um, that you would call them by name today and if that's you and you don't know him just fully surrender, fully uh, confess. The Bible says, if, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins, cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Lord, would you draw them in and just in your heart, just give yourself to him, confess everything to him and, and watch him wash you clean by his blood. Uh, Father, uh, for those that have been walking with you that are feel like they're in that place of struggle, that faith is might not be where they they once were. Uh, Lord, I ask that you to remind them, the Bible says in Revelation, that we would not neglect our first love. Lord, remind them of their first love. And Lord, ignite that zeal. Lord, uh, like Paul said over Timothy, fan into flame the gifts of God that are within you that came through the laying on of my hands. For God didn't give you a spirit of fear but of power of love and a sound mind. Lord, I ask for those who feel like their minds are not sound, Lord, pour it out. Lord, give them that confidence, that assurance. Lord, and for those who are riddled with fear, Lord, give them perfect love that casts out all fear. Uh, Lord, I ask that for those that feel weak, that you would give them the strength to fan that thing back into flame. Amen. Amen. Oh, it's very powerful. <laughs> 
feel Holy Spirit's presence is getting thicker and thicker as you're praying. We agree. We agree. Will, thank you so much for giving us your precious time. You are such a blessing. Liz, I just want to like bottle up your, uh, your heart. (laughs) This is sound (laughs) off. And just like, like you just ooze awesome. You just ooze love. And I just, I would like, if I had a lotion made of that, I would, uh, I would put it on in the morning. (laughs) Love lotion. You're like the sweetest person. It makes me feel awful. Uh, yeah, no, just, <laughs> 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 oh thank you that's made yeah. my day oh it's so <laughs> so good to be with you yeah. it really is and guys thank you for giving us your precious time too we pray you have the best week you've ever had and the most beautiful intimate moments in the presence of jesus and look forward to being with you again next monday god bless Hi, if you really enjoyed today's show and you want to go deeper with Jesus and experience his love and his presence more than you ever have, then I have a present for you, a free gift. If you want to jump over to experiencinggodslove.com and just click on and sign up, then you will receive one of my teaching videos that I have created especially for you that will not only give you a few keys just very, very quickly that you can uh, utilize in your daily walk with the Lord, um, but also I'm going to take you there as well. So it's an activation. So yeah, so jump over to experiencinggodslove.com and you are going to be so blessed.